Hi, Mr. Richards here, and today's lesson 5.2 is on geometric proof. Our objective is to write geometric proofs. A real-world link is on detectives, and a police detective uses analytical thinking to solve crimes. Inductive reasoning is the process of making a conjecture after observing several examples. Unlike inductive reasoning, deductive reasoning uses facts, rules, definition, or laws to make conjectures from given situations. So inductive, you're observing examples and making a conjecture. Deductive reasoning, you're using facts, rules, definitions, laws to come up with conjectures. And we're going to look at these four and see if we can figure out which goes with which. Every time Bill watches his favorite team on television, the team loses. Must be a Browns fan. So he decides to not watch the team play on TV. And you really don't think it's going to make a difference. Anyways, um, so he's using examples. He's observing something that happens, and so he's making a conjecture. That there is just like inductive reasoning. So we can draw a line down to inductive reasoning. In order to play sports, you need to have a B average. Simon has a B average, so he concludes he can play sports. Well, that's using a law or a rule or a fact, and that would be deductive reasoning. All triangles have three sides and three angles. Mariah has a figure with three sides and three angles, so it must be a triangle. Again, using rules, facts, definitions, laws to come up with an answer. So there's deductive reasoning. After performing a science experiment, Liddell concluded that only 20% or 80% of tomato seeds would grow into plants. Well, he observed something there. He performed an experiment and came up with a conjecture, and that would be inductive reasoning. Now, what is our proof process? Step one, list the given information or what you know. If possible, draw a diagram to illustrate this information. Step two, state what is to be proven. Step three, create a deductive argument by forming a logical chain of statements linking the given information to what you are trying to prove. Step four, justify each statement with a reason. Reasons could include definitions, algebraic properties, and theorems. And step five is state what it is that you have proven. And we're going to be practicing this in a couple of different ways today. Now, a proof is a logical argument where each statement is justified by a reason. A paragraph proof, also called an informal proof, involves writing a paragraph to explain why a conjecture is true. In example one below, you will use the algebraic property of substitution and the geometric relationship between vertical angles. The diamondback rattlesnake has a diamond pattern on its back. An enlargement of the skin is shown. If the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4, write a paragraph proof to show that the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Now we are given the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4. So step 1 is to list the given information, and that's what is done right here. Step two is to state what is to be proven. Well, we want to prove that the measure of angle two is equal to the measure of angle three. And now we're going to be using arguments, facts, to prove this. Now, the proof is measure of angle one equals measure of angle two because they are vertical angles. You can see measure of angle one and measure of angle two are vertical angles. Okay. Now, since the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4, using the given information, the measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 4 by substitution. Okay, so if 1 equals 4 and 1 equals 2, we can substitute out the 2 and the 4, and so 2 is 4. Now, measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 3 by vertical angles, and since 2 is 4, 2 equals 3, so 2 must equal 3. Now, if your head's spinning a little bit, that's okay. Um, these are a little bit tricky here. But again, we're using given information. 1 is 4, R equal. 
We're trying to prove that 2 and 3 are equal. So if 1 and 4 are equal, they started off by saying 1 and 2 are equal by vertical angles. Now since 1 and 4 are equal, and 1 and 2 are equal, 2 and 4 must be equal. Then they did the same thing again and said, well, if 4 and 3 are equal, 2 and 4 must also be equal, which we just proved, and so then 2 and 3 are equal. It's, it feels like a little bit of a circle, and sometimes the paragraph proof is so informal where it's hard to see, uh, but let's practice that here next. Refer to the diagram shown. Line, the measure of line segment AR is equal to the measure of line segment CR. And the measure of line segment DR is equal to the measure of line segment BR. Write a paragraph, proof, to show that the line, measure of line segment AR plus the line, measure of line segment DR is equal to the measure of line segment CR plus the measure of line segment BR. Yikes. Well, again, the first step here is to write what's given. And we are given that AR is equal to the measure of line segment CR, and the measure of line segment DR is equal to the lines, measure of line segment BR. So the first part of the paragraph proof is pretty simple. We're just writing down what we're given. Next, we want to write down what we want to prove. Now, we're trying to prove that the measure of, of line segment AR plus the measure of line segment dr is equal to the measure of line segment cr plus the measure of line segment br. And again, I, it sounds like I'm saying a lot. We can see in our little sticky note here, the ar is read as the measure of line segment ar. So again, trying to be mathematically correct here. Now our proof, and again, a lot of it's given for us, which is kind of nice. You know that the measure of line segment AR is equal to the measure of line segment CR, and the measure of line segment DR is equal to the measure of line segment BR. Now, measure of line segment AR plus the measure of line segment DR equals measure of line segment CR plus the measure of line segment DR by the addition property of equality. So, measure of line segment AR plus the measure of line segment DR equals the measure of line segment CR plus the measure of line segment BR by what's called substitution. Now a two-column proof or formal proof contains statements and reasons organized in two columns. This may be a little bit easier to see than the paragraph proof. Once a statement or conjecture has been proven, it is called a theorem, and it can be used as a reason to justify statements and other proofs. So, write a two-column proof to show that if two angles are vertical angles, then they have the same measure. What we're given here is that lines M and N intersect. Well, there's M and N. Angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. Okay. So we're going to try to prove that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. Well, our first statement is again our given statement that line M and line N intersect. And also here on the same line for A, 1 and 3 are vertical angles. Okay, that's given. Now, it says 1 and 2 are a linear pair and 3 and 2 are a linear pair. And again, our definition here of linear pair, a linear pair of angles is a pair of adjacent angles formed by intersecting lines. Okay, so we're just saying they're adjacent angles. One and two are adjacent angles, and three and two are adjacent angles here. Now, the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is equal to 180, and the measure of angle three plus the measure of angle two is also equal to 180. Notice how one and two are supplementary, and two or three are supplementary. Now some fun math is done here. Notice, we have the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. Now instead of writing 180, we're writing the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2. So if you can kind of see this here, what we did here, we had the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, and that ended up here in D. And instead of writing equals 180 again, 
since we had the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 also eating, equaling 180, we use what's called substitution to put that down here. Now, if this were an equation, you could subtract out this measure of angle 2, and that's what kind of happened here. We subtracted out the measure of angle 2 to say, okay, the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 3. And now we get to try this on our own. The statements for a two-column proof to show that if the measure of angle y equals the measure of angle z, then x equals 100 are given below. Complete the proof by providing the reasons. Well, here we have y is 2x minus 90 degrees, and z is x plus 10 degrees. Well, we're being told y equals z, Measure of angle y is 2x minus 90, and the measure of angle z is x plus 10. Well, that's what's given, so we can write for our reason for a given. What about b? 2x plus 90 equals x plus 10. Well, check this out. If y equals z, and y is 2x minus 90, and z is x plus 10, what we did here is we put in this 2x minus 90 for the y. That's there. And we put in this x plus 10 in for the z. That's right there. So we substituted here. This we can write as substitution. Now, x minus 90 equals what happened here? Well, we subtracted an x from both sides. So that would be the subtraction property. I'm just going to write property of equality. Then, let's see. We went from x minus 90 equals 10 to x equals 100 looks to me like we added 90 to both sides. So since we added, that would be the addition property of equality. And those, in fact, are our answers. So the first thing, we always start off with the given. Then hopefully you can see where a substitution was made where then we subtracted an x from both sides, and then we added 90 to both sides to get our final answer, that x equals 100. And the more you practice these, the bit easier that they'll become. Um, throughout this lesson, you'll be given a framework, whether you're given the statements or the reasons or just parts to fill in. You're not going to be asked yet to just come up with one of these completely on your own. But look back at the examples as you try these out. Uh, look back at your book, and you will do just fine. That's it for this lesson. Good luck.